do we think when we see someone without limbs, or someone in a wheelchair? We think they are incapable. The word we have formed in description of these people is disabled. But upon deconstruction of this word, one can see it is no different from words like unable, restricted, impotent, or stopped. However, there are people all over the world with abnormalities who continue to operate in contrast to this blunt term. Join us in meeting them as we examine disabled, a mythical word. Physically disadvantaged people have made impacts in society across countless areas of expertise, from science, school, learning, public speaking, and also sport. I'm here at QSAC, training ground of Paralympic athlete Matthew Cameron, who has agreed to talk to us about his journey to the Paralympic podium. Hi, Matt. Thanks for taking the time out to be interviewed today. Uh, so what was it like growing up with your condition? Um, well, I'm a pretty positive guy, so I'm going to say it was pretty fantastic. But I think um, particularly um, towards the like, really early stages, probably between you know, from being born to about eight, it was a bit tough for particularly my parents because I had, had something like 25 operations in life in that stage of time. So it was a lot of time in hospital. But um, after, I, after I probably t um, became a teenager, I was pretty, pretty up. Um, out there and having fun, trying to keep up with my brother and doing lots and lots of uh, sports to make up for all the time I was being sick and around in hospital. So I imagine for you, the first embracing sport was a big moment personally. Um, yeah, I suppose it, it is when I look back um, at it because um, you know, as, as a young fellow, you don't really um, notice those things in life. It's just this kind of uh, whatever. Your mates or brother are up to like this, this trying to figure. It wasn't until like uh, about yeah eight through to thirteen that I started going kind of competing and swimming. Um, and then as a teenager, did some team sports like wheelchair basketball. And then now athletics. Um, so I suppose when I do look back on it, was it has, sport has played a huge part of my life growing up. It's kind of how I got my confidence as well. Yeah. So tell me about that race specifically where you won the uh, bronze medal. Um, so yes, it was a uh, part of a relay team before my fall. Um, we qualified the slowest to make the final. Um, I guess only four teams uh, in the wheelchair relay, due to each team in each country getting two lanes. So we, qual we qualified the slowest and we probably had the slowest start um, we ever had done in a 4 by 4 yeah, So I didn't go off quite according to a plan. But um, so uh, to all the guys plus myself, we um, we kind of towards a late stage of the race, we ran this drive back where um, coming last by about maybe 30 to 40 meters. And, um, when I got my change, I was um, thinking, oh god, we've lost this one. What's, what's going to happen? So I just kind of went and picked, picked down and popped up and just pushed as fast as I ever did. Um, I then realised that the halfway point of the crowd got really loud and being a only one Asian country I thought maybe, you know, maybe something, either someone's crashed or I'm catching them. So I, I walked up and as I walked up I was only a mere probably second from the outside crashing into somebody um, from behind which would have been hugely embarrassing. So thanks to the crowd I was able to look up and um, go around uh, to other teams to um, take us I think into second for our final leg where Colin was able to hang on for a finish. So you, you even surprised yourself with how quick you were going then? You managed to hold the rock at the end then? So yeah, um, Richie Colin would be fantastic to our whole career of probably just got given the line of silver which was, which is, you know, you always want that extra, extra colour in the level but um, to come away with the bronze is fantastic, um, much better than 